What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I've got a bunch of videos coming out soon and a bunch of short films and all kinds of stuff I'm working on. But until then I decided to make this video for you guys because you loved the Vegas Pro 20 tutorial. I decided to make a Vegas Pro 21 tutorial because it is slightly different. And also the methods that I use are highly updated. The last video is actually going to get removed soon because it was highly outdated. But I'm going to go ahead and get straight into the meat of this tutorial and make it quick for you. So first things first, camera. You need to make sure you shoot on a flat color profile setting if you can and try and keep it default. I know a lot of YouTubers out there will say set your saturation and contrast and sharpness to this, this, and this. Well actually, camera manufacturers have a specific lookup table that they install into your camera software which becomes very very um, important here in fact it's not even a LUT it's actually a color space so like for example this was shot on a Z cam we are going to be grading footage from two different cameras just so I can show you what it looks like when put together this is a Z cam E2C which uses a Panasonic uh, V gamut V log kind of color space whenever you actually convert it or whatever because I, sh I shoot in ProRes RAW. Anyway, so we've got a Panasonic color space here. We've got a Panasonic color space here. Um, and as you can see, the Ninja V is my uh, Ninja recorder that was on my Z cam. And then we've got this uh, Lumix P104 footage here that was shot on the Lumix, both of which are done in the same color space. They just look a little bit different because this one is a cinema camera, this one is just your consumer camera. So that's it on settings. Now we're going to get to the actual grade. Go ahead and hit Alt-G. You'll end up seeing this menu here. You're going to want to make sure to have your vector scope and waveform, just like in Vegas Pro 20. You're going to make sure to have that vector scope waveform magnified waveform set to luminance. Do not set it to composite, set it to luminance. So I actually have found a Panasonic V-Log to Rec. 709 LUT pack and there's actually uh, quite a few of these. It's in the um, bounce color true basic log conversion LUTs updated. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Highly recommend it. Uh, this has all of your camera profiles going from DJI to Ari to Sony to Red, Blackmagic, all of these. So that's why I say whenever you shoot in your camera's default flat color profile, the reason why you don't want to alter it is because you're going to use one of these. These are conversion LUTs. This is going to convert it the, the color space to Rec. 709, which is what your typical computer sRGB monitor uses. So this is going to get rid of that flat kind of look. So Personally, I really like this uh, Panasonic V-Log Rec. 709 LUT. I'll go ahead and open that. And as you can see, it we already see a huge improvement here. Now, the difference between this one and Vegas's built-in V-Log Rec. 709 is that the built-in V-Log Rec. 709 doesn't account for exposure. So, like, for example, I could change the lift and change the gain. And that is properly exposed, but you can still see that there's a little bit of, like, this this white filmy kind of look over it and until you add contrast and now you're blowing stuff out of proportion so to speak but if we go back we reset these wheels and we go and choose the other LUT that I mentioned it gets rid of that and then we can just go ahead and fix the uh, we can just fix the lift which controls the bottom portion you want that to be at around zero and then the gain which is this top portion which you want around 100. And you're just going to play with these until you get it where you need it. This looks good for me. Everything looks good. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on this drop down on the right and click auto color balance. It's going to fix my whites. And then we're going to go ahead and do our actual grade. Now there's multiple ways of doing this. My, the way that I wanted to do was straighten this panel. I want my shadows, which is the dark areas, to look kind of cool. And then I want my main subject to look a little bit warm, so I'm going to kind of give it just a tick upwards. And then my highlights, I usually like to go for yellow highlights, especially during the sunset. Go ahead and add a little bit of contrast. And that's the color grade done. Now you could stop there, but you could do more things. 
So let's say I want to add a secondary grade. We can do that. Let's go ahead and click the effects panel. I'm speeding ahead of this. Click the effects button down here. And then you're going to choose color corrector. And now you can do other stuff too. So like for example, if you want um, a bunch of different stuff here, the presets that I've done before, like I can choose this preset and that's what that looks like. Uh, I can scroll through and just go to different ones. Like this one, for example, looks pretty interesting. I could keep that. That actually looks really good. And then whenever we play it, it looks like this. It's only a couple seconds long because I didn't want to show you what the actual project itself looks like. But yeah, that's what that part looks like. I think it looks pretty nice. Moving on to the second clip, we're going to speed through this one, do the exact same thing. Alt G, input LUT, rec 709 from the vlog. And I like to do the exposure adjustment first, so we can go ahead and do that. Now, whenever your waveform looks like this, I just try to get the majority, or at least the top majority, to start hitting the highlights, and then bottom majority start hitting the zero. So right now, that's about as good as I'm going to get. And then I'm going to go ahead and auto white balance. And then I'm going to change a couple things here. I want, I want really cool shadows. And I actually want to cool off the mid-tones just slightly, but then warm up the highlights. And then I'm going to go ahead and contrast. And then I'm actually going to do that secondary color grade as mentioned before. And this is going to be really important here because this one is a little bit of a complex shot. So I'm actually going to use color balance instead. I want to balance out those midtones. So I'm going to go into the midtones and reduce the blue just ever so slightly and also reduce the green. There we go. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Oh, not that much. About that's good. And now if we play it, there you go. Now, what about Lumix footage? Because we want to match it. We want to make it look similar to these two. Now, obviously, it's going to be difficult to match to those two because it's shot on a completely different camera. But the color space is what's important. So we can Alt-G. I downloaded the... I actually had to download this, the ground control GH4 LUT for sign like D to Rec 709. It's important to make sure that you properly expose your shots. I was unfortunately on a run and gun setup. I was by myself with no PA. So unfortunately I did not get that um, the luxury of being able to properly expose all of these, but you should definitely make that like a main priority in the future if, if you are a filmmaker. But anyways, get back to the color grade. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna choose this clear portion. And I'm gonna go ahead and fix, even though it's overexposed, I'm still gonna fix it and make the top end top out at 100. The bottom end, I can actually lower that some, get some of those dots to hit uh, zero. Looks a lot better already. The highlights, I'm gonna want it to be slightly yellow, but not too much, just because we don't wanna damage it. And for this part, it's really just playing around. I don't mind it being slightly green here. The shadows, I want cool shadows. And if it's like, if you can't tell where your shadows are, you can always move it to the outer rims. Just start moving it around and you should see it. So I'm gonna go with really cool shadows. Go ahead and introduce some contrast. I like it. That brings us to our second clip, which is right here. I'm gonna choose a clear spot in the footage. It's kind of difficult because the shutter speed it was actually shot on was, was pretty uh, low, but I'm gonna choose this right here. Same thing. Now let's say that you color graded, actually it's a perfect moment to show. Let's say you color graded right here and you really wanna match your same shot because it's in the same area same scene what i like to do 
is I can actually export a LUT from the color grading panel settings. Now if you put, it's important to note that if you use a secondary effect, this is not going to work. It's only going to copy over and save the color grading settings from this panel here. This is not going to be for any other plugins. But you can click this button right here for export LUT. And then you can put that wherever you want. I'm going to put that here in my LUTs folder. I'm just going to call this test. And now if I go here, instead of having to do all that other stuff, I can go to look LUT, which is if you're going to use this, for example. Open that. Bam. It's matched. It doesn't look like it because there's not much green in this one to kind of show it, but it is matched. You can definitely see it in the shirt as the reference point that it is indeed matched. So, um, and then you can also change like the strength of it. Let's say you don't like the look of some of it. But, like for example, I really hate how the shadows are just absolutely crushed here. So I can just kind of let off just a little bit just enough to prove the point and then do the rest in saturation and then raise that bottom end if I really want to. Looks pretty good to me. And that's how you cross color grade. Again, it's going to be difficult to match footage from a completely different sensor, but at least it's in the same color space. And that's pretty much how I color grade my footage.